here we are at the front of the library and behind me you can see people have really been reading a lot together Haynes reads a million so I hope you've been entering your books at www.hayneslibrary.org slash read r-e-a-d and we're gonna do our nature walk from here right down to some raspberry bushes that I know now how many things do you think we'd find between the library and the raspberry bushes that are close to the harbor. How many things do you think will be edible? We'll find out as we go. Maybe you're guessing five. Maybe you're guessing 10. Maybe you'll guess 15. Let's see what we can find. We're gonna cross the street and just like I've always said on our nature walks, even more dangerous than bears and moose are cars and trucks. So we always look both ways before we cross the street. We are across the street from the library and I already see dandelion leaves. Those are edible. They're supposed to be good with a little bit of creamy dressing in a salad. And over here I see sweet and sour grass, also known as mountain sorrel. My kids like that because it's sweet and sour. That's two things before we've even gotten any further than just across the street. Hey, there's thing number three. Do I see gooseberries growing? right here on this beautiful bush. Of course we won't pick them because they belong to the CIA. Behind me we have a bunch of berry bushes and I think in a little bit more time we're gonna see some salmon berries growing here and then I see the beautiful fireweed. Fireweed is edible too. Of course in an ideal world we would find it a little bit further from a dusty road. We've got some pineapple chamomile growing right here. Those little yellow buds, they taste kind of like pineapple. And sometimes people use the leaves to make a tea. Well, it's wonderful the number of edible things we're finding right in our own neighborhood. Here's some more beautiful fireweed. It's really getting tall. There's a saying, as high as the fireweed grows, so deep will be the snows. Not sure if that's true, but looks like we might have some pretty deep snow this winter. Now I see some clover growing right along this path. And if you do come along to pluck off a little tiny bit of clover, that part right down there has some nectar that can be sucked out. And that's edible. Now we've definitely found a place with a bunch of clover and something delicious and edible, strawberries. Maid's looking right now to see if she can find any that are ripe. Sometimes you have to have just the right combination. I see right here, there are some strawberries that are almost ripe. Yep, we'll give them just a little bit longer. Here's something else very edible. I see raspberry bushes. In fact, these raspberries look like they are well on their way to growing into something delicious. We'll give them a few more weeks and I bet they'll be good. Well, here's a spruce tree and it looks like the spruce tips are, are gonna be a part of that branch now. It's too late to pick them and make them into spruce tip syrup, but spruce tip syrup's definitely edible. Now we come to the Sitka Rose. I can see the rose hips. Oh, they're doing just fine. A good source of vitamin C. All the Sitka Rose flowers are gone though. I guess that tells us what time of year it is, July. We're back at the library. How many edible things did you count? I counted 11 potentially edible things. I hope that you're reading a lot of great books this summer. And if you like this video and the others I've been doing, will you subscribe? Have a great afternoon reading wonderful books until we meet again. Bye-bye.